Hi everybody, so today we're going to be talking about rabies. And as most people know, rabies, when they, when they hear of rabies, they always think of dogs. Um, but rabies is a virus that can actually go from animals to humans. So let's take a look at it real quick and how do people get rabies? Well, like I just mentioned, the most common way that people know about getting rabies is from dogs. Um, if you go to some countries like the Philippines, this is still pretty common for people to get rabies from a dog, from a dog bite. Um, but also, in the United States, because we vaccinate our dogs so much, what happens is the most common way to get it here is from something called a silver-haired bat. Now, you can actually get rabies from any type of bat, but the most common that we have in the United States is our, is our silver-haired bat. So there's our bat right there. Okay, that, that's the most common way. Another way that people get it is they can get it from organ transplants, such as the cornea of the eye. So if we look right here, what we're looking at is the cornea of the eye. The cornea of the eye is that clear part that you see that sticks out. And what it does is it directs light into the pupil of the eye. So there's not a very big blood supply to this, so there's not a way to really fight off rabies if you have it. So in some, place, in some countries what will happen is somebody will have rabies and they won't realize it, we'll see why in a little bit, and this will be taken off and put onto somebody else and now that person gets rabies. So what's going to happen here? Well, let's say that we have our bat here and our bat happens to bite the skin. This is a skin cell you're looking at right here. Okay? This, is, this is the top part, that's the part that we can see. This is the bottom part, which is called the dermis. This is the epidermis. This is the dermis here. If rabies gets inside the body, <clears throat> gets inside the skin, it can start to multiply. And what will happen is you don't have to break the skin in order for it to get inside and to start multiplying. So now I've got this multiplying here. Eventually what it's going to do is in the skin, we have nerves. So here's our nerves. We, we basically have nerves that are for touch and pressure. There's a nerve, there's a receptor on a nerve, and this is the nerve, and then over here we also have a nerve. Rabies will go, like we said, it can multiply there, then rabies will actually go into these nerves. Now this is part of the peripheral nervous system, okay, which we call the PNS. It can also multiply inside the peripheral nervous system. So it's going to start making its way down the nerve, and it's going to start heading over to the spinal cord. But let's say in this case, we're saying the skin wasn't broken. So here's the thing about rabies, is you can get a lethal dose of rabies without even having the skin broken. But now it's starting to make its way down, right? But before we get there, let's talk about in this situation, let's say you actually broke the skin. And this here is a muscle, okay? And with muscles, you have tendons, all right? And then also you have ligaments, not with muscles, but you have ligaments inside the body. So I could actually have something bite and go down as far as the muscle. And now what's gonna happen is my rabies, it can go into muscle, the tendon, or the ligaments and reproduce them there. But it doesn't matter where it starts, eventually it wants to get into the peripheral nervous system. So once it gets into the peripheral nervous system, like we mentioned, it's going to start to make its way over to the spinal cord, which we're gonna look at this in just a little bit more. Let me pull this over real quick. So eventually it's going to get to our spinal cord. Now once it gets to the spinal cord, oh, and by the way, it travels very slowly here. So it only travels in the peripheral nervous system about 15 to 100 millimeters per day. So if it's down in your feet and it's trying to make it to the spinal cord and then to the brain, that's going to take a while. Usually the incubation period for rabies is going to be between two months and it can be as long as six years. So we'll come back to that in just a minute. So now, this is my spinal cord. The way you're looking at the spinal cord here is imagine you have a person that's standing like this, all right, and we take this off, and then you're looking down like this. So let's say you happen to be looking down at the spinal cord. 
Or if I were to lean forward and you were to slice my body in half and look at the spinal cord, this is what you would see. Connected to this, you have nerves that go up to the brain, or, at, or in this case, they're coming down from the brain. Rabies can affect either sensory nerves or can travel on either sensory nerves or motor nerves. Motor nerves are nerves that go to muscle. So rabies is going to get into this nerve and it's going to go up to the brain. So let's take a look at this real quick. And what's going to happen now once it gets up to the brain? So I'm just going to draw my spinal cord again right here real quick. I don't need it as big now. Okay. And then this was the part that we were just looking at a second ago. And this was my peripheral nerve, right? And I had it coming to muscle over here. So what's going to happen here is now I have my nerve that's going up to the brain. And now my cranial nerve has made it to the brain. Uh, not cranial nerve. Now my nerve has made it to the brain. And here's the brain. Once rabies gets to the brain, the body's going to try to form uh, an attack, an immune response. Okay, so you're going to get these white blood cells, and in the brain you have white blood cells called microglia. And you can get some other white blood cells, which are going to try to attack the rabies. So let's just say our rabies is up here, it's still multiplying, and my white blood cell, my microglia, which is a white blood cell in the brain, is going to attack this. So now, it's going to start to cause symptoms. At this point, it is now too late. When symptoms start with rabies, it's too late, the person's going to die. The symptoms are going to be something such as a headache. They may get a fever, they may get malaise, which is just a general overall worn down feeling. But at this point, it's too late. Now, the other things that are gonna happen with rabies is in the brain, you actually have nerves that are gonna come out and they are going to go to different parts of the face. So let me draw the face, oh. let me draw a face again here real fast. And we're gonna come around like this. I'm going to have my eye. This isn't going to be too great of a face because I'm more interested in Okay? All right, so there's our face. There's our eye again. Here's my pupil. So what's going to happen is rabies is, is going to travel along these nerves. Now, some of these nerves will come down and go to the throat. So here's my throat. And there's my nerves going to the throat. I'm going to go like this just to distinguish that's the throat. When it does that, it can do two different things. One, when the person sees water, the rabies virus will actually cause the muscles in the throat to spasm. And this is another symptom of rabies as we start to get more into it. And this is called hydrophobia. So hydrophobia is a fear of water. And like I said, so what will happen is these people will actually, do, when they see water and they go to drink it or they, the thought of it, will cause the throat to spasm and they won't be able to drink water. The other thing that's going to happen is you also have some of these nerves that come out and they go to salivary glands. And if it goes to a salivary gland, what will happen is um, the salivary glands continue to produce the saliva, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. The salivary glands will continue to produce saliva, but eventually what will happen is because it's coming down to here, the person will no longer be able to swallow. Well, the salivary gland will continue to produce saliva. And as it continues to produce saliva, the saliva builds up in the throat, and eventually the person starts to drool. And what it looks like is that they're foaming at the mouth, but in actuality, they're drooling. So the foaming at the mouth is because the person cannot swallow and saliva builds up. The other thing that's going to happen is you actually have nerves that come out and do sensory to the face. And they can feel things such as light touch. Well, if you take a piece of paper and you were to wave in front of these people's face or any air draft, it's gonna cause basically spasms and the person's gonna be irritated by that too. 
as the disease, and again, this is, a, is, this is as it's going on. Another thing that's gonna happen is the person is going to alternate between periods of calm, when everything seems to be fine, and then severely agitated. They may scream and yell or something like that. That's gonna happen with rabies too. Now, another thing that can happen is you can get something called furious rabies, which is usually the type that's going to affect people. And in furious rabies, there's periods of restlessness. So you have periods of restlessness. And then they may have periods of, again, agitation. The other type of rabies that people, oh, by the way, in this type of rabies too, what's gonna happen is eventually the virus knows that the host is dying. So it needs to be transferred onto somebody else. So what can actually happen when people have this, and it's starting to continue on, we're getting the drooling, because usually once you start to see the drooling or the foam at the mouth and the swallowing problems, the person only has a few days left to live. What's gonna happen at that point is a person, or this could be an animal, I'm just saying person here, a person may try to bite other people. Well, let me put other animals. And the reason for this, the reason for this again, is the virus knows this host is dying, it needs to transfer onto another host. So in this case, what it's gonna do is we're gonna try to bite other animals. By the way, just a fun fact, this is where they got the idea for Wolfman from, and this is where they got the idea of zombies. It's because you're trying to bite and pass on the virus. Okay, so anyways, the other type of paralysis that can happen, or rabies, is called paralytic paralysis. I'm sorry, paralytic rabies. This one's more likely to affect cats, and in this one what's going to happen is the cat's just going to lay there, unbothered by anything, until somebody tries to handle it. At which point it's going to start to try to snap at something. And, when it's, it, when, and then it snaps or something. But also what happens here is this may be misdiagnosed as Guillain-Barre syndrome. Um, Guillain-Barre syndrome is a condition in which you get paralysis of the arms and legs. So going back real fast, what I wanted to say is a lot of times the rabies diagnosis will be missed because as we saw, you can actually get a lethal dose of rabies without ever breaking the skin. So imagine you go camping somewhere a bat bites you and you don't wake up. And then what's going to happen is the um, virus takes a long time. And let's say it, in this case, it just happens to take six years. It very seldom does it, but it could be six years later. And now you go to the doctor because you're complaining about headaches. You have no history. You don't, can't remember ever being bitten. And now you have the, the rabies virus. And like we said, it's too late. One of the good things about rabies is that you can actually take the virus after you've been infected, which is uncommon for other things. So that's it for rabies. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, comment below. And if you like this video, please check out these videos.